All right, so next one's from Carlos Hernandez, and he's going to get a suspension for this one. Uh, subject is turn him, yeah, turn him heel. Hey, Conan, Disco, and Joe, hope you're all doing – and then f- f- figure out the first few sentences is why he's getting suspended, okay? <laughs> uh, turn him heel. Hey, Conan, Disco, and Joe, hope you're all doing well. When a wrestler isn't working out as a babyface, I always hear, quote, just turn them heel. While I agree 99% of the time, why is it easier to be a heel? Is it today's society, or is it because a heel you can make mistakes such as a botch and then proceed to cut a promo on the fans? You guys said Tony Storm is more comfortable as a heel, and we saw Top Dollar turn a heel after his botch, and the fans wanted Cody Rhodes as a heel in AEW. Also, what is it about someone like Rey Mysterio, who's never been a heel to my knowledge, and guys like Jeff Hardy and John Cena, who are only heels for a period in their career? Thanks for your time. Always love the show and appreciate the fan interaction we get with you all on Patreon. Bro, if you love the show, you've heard us talk about this ad nauseum. We repeat this all the time, Carlos. So you're going to get suspension for asking a question we, we, we've we discussed, but I'm just going to repeat it real quick in the mailbag. It's because it's easier to heal than it is to – it's easier to heal – baby facey to not get any reaction hurts your confidence as a wrestler. Turning heel and just healing is a lot easier to do than baby facing and not getting reaction. So that's why more people are comfortable being a heel is because a lot of people are not comfortable with not getting a reaction. You can see it. You know, would you agree with that, Conan, since, we, since we've talked about this before? Yeah, plus there are guys, it's almost like in the movies. There's guys in the movies that are always baby faces because they're good baby faces. You know, there's right. no reason for them to play a heel. And the same thing, Rey Mysterio would not be a good heel because he, neither would, I don't think, Jeff Hardy either. They're, right. There's there's such <laughs> love and they're really nice guys in person, you know. Um, there's just some guys that don't need to, just like there's some guy, like when Ric Flair was trying to be a baby face. He really wasn't as over as when he was a heel because he's a natural heel. Right. I think Charlotte's facing the same problem. She's a natural yeah. heel. Why are you, you know, yeah. Yeah. Next up Remember Jeff Sky- Hardy? Jeff Hardy was a heel in Impact in like 2010. Yeah. They made him a champion. Yeah. You guys didn't like that? I didn't really remember it. I couldn't even comment mm-hmm. on it. I, I thought it was, I liked it just because it was different for Jeff, you know, but. Yeah. God. All right. Next is from Skyflame09. Somebody's New Jack backstage. Conan mentioned once the New Jack pressed Perry Saturn backstage because he used a term that most minorities use that means friend. Are there any other backstage incidents of Jack getting into it with a person where it could have or did up end bad? Yeah, he, he got in somebody's face in a, the, the old NWA TNA uh, locker room because the guy had said something about him. He got in, I, I, was it Tracy Smothers maybe even? I don't, I don't know. know. He, got, he got in somebody's face. Yeah, we had to pull him away and just. If it was, him, was br- those br- br- guys. Br- th- those guys yeah, had incidents be- in ECW too. So. Well, maybe that's what it was. He was getting in Tracy Smothers' face. Tracy said, "Why are you starting it?" And uh, I think Road Dog talked to me. I, I vaguely remember that. But I um, remember the Perry well, Saturday. I don't. I didn't know this because I was I actually there. Let me hear yeah. this. Well, he used the N word around him. Oh, he did. And bro, New Jack blew up, and he tried to pass the heat on to me. He goes, "Well, Conan uses it all the time." And New Jack goes, well, he gets a pass. You don't. He right. goes, what's And They had to be separated. But New Jack was furious. The first day I went to ECW, one of the Dudleys, the one that supposedly spoke Spanish or something, I don't know what his name was, Latino Dudley or whatever. What I know, was right. name? I know what you're going to tell. Yeah, Dances with Dudley. Yeah, Dances with Dudley. Native American, yeah. And uh, so we were in this, it was called Jim Thorpe, Jim Pennsylvania. Thorpe. Mm-hmm. And the arena was basically at the end of a cliff uh, as a shoot bro Mm -hmm. and uh i was in the dressing room and i remember uh uh, new jack was waiting for this guy to come in and he started punching him and they both started fighting going back and forth and dudley and uh, new jack ended putting his head through a glass window bro and if he would have pushed him he would have gone into the cliff you know Mm -hmm. And I remember him another time, he had a gun and he was pissed off at the Dudley boys and he was going to go look for them. He's a wild mother. He was a wild, you know, I, I got yeah. along with you, Jack. Though. Yeah, me too. Jack didn't, Jack didn't yeah. give a f- I don't know if you, you guys may have seen it. It's, it's you know, all over social media from time to time. When New Jack threw Vic Grimes off the, uh, the right. scaffold in XPW. Maybe. Oh, I was there that day. Not only and did he, he almost me, kill him. He told but, me, yeah. he goes, I'm going to pay them back for, for what he did to me. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Well. That's Next is from um, CJ Emanuel, sub is Dusty. I was watching SmackDown on Hulu and sub- with subtitles on. Whenever Dom or Priest spoke Spanish or the promos, Hulu subtitled, they were speaking non-English. Conan, does that have heat with you? 
Have you seen that any biography on, biography on Dusty Rhodes? It's one of the best wrestling documentaries I've ever seen, especially Dusty and Cody having completely different recollections of growing up with Dusty's their father. <laughs> How are your respective experiences with Dusty, and what did you learn from either in the ring or behind the scenes, in front of the show and stuff and everything? C.J. Emanuel from San Antonio. Uh, Dusty was an excellent storyteller. Uh, he was very charismatic to be around. He was funny, uh, but he didn't. I didn't. He. He didn't. He was never really complete. When he was a booker, he was never really honest with me. You know, he would tell me stuff and not do. You know, I, I just. You know, but I still grew up with the guy. Like I was. You know, but it's like he's just. He's just a tip. Bro, guys like that. I guess that's why they were like in charge. They're just. They. They work all the boys. You know. I guess that's what he's used to. But uh, yeah. But he was. He was. I mean, definite part of my childhood growing up. I mean, he was incredible. Go see live. Go ahead. Yeah, I actually went to see him in the Miami Beach Convention Center when I was a kid because he was like the idol of Miami, bro. I mean, you right. could put him up there with anybody, the Dolphins. I mean, that's how yeah. hot that guy was. And when I met him, I definitely marked out. Um, but when we worked in TNA, uh, it was very weird, bro, because we would talk and he like he, he was not honest with me either. And which hurt, which really hurt me. I was like, wow, really, dude? Yeah, right. And the other thing was that... um. He didn't know half the people's name on the roster. I'm like, how could you? Right. You're the booker, dude. And uh, and he also, which I thought was a very successful little group, 3LK, me, Ron Killings, and BG James, he came in and he broke that up. You know, right. and I just thought that, why are you breaking up a good thing? And he brought in um Billy Gunn, and then he wanted Billy Gunn and Road Dog to be a team. So he broke up that. And there was to me, there was no reason for it. But anyways... Yeah. Okay. Next one is from uh, Stevie444, and the subject is heat. I love your clip about who is to blame for Bobby Lashley not getting a match at WrestleMania. What I'd love to know from you guys is what do you think might be Bray Wyatt's backstage reputation right now? According to the Sheets, Wyatt has a $3 million per year deal that works a very, very relaxed schedule. His storylines are all about him going over the opponent every segment. He generally has the worst match in every show he wrestles on. Now it seems like Wyatt can't even be trusted to make the giant shows, which means his opponents get screwed over too. Do you think it's possible that Bray Wyatt has a ton of backstage heat? P.S. Billy is still talking about you guys. Um, what do you think about... I, 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 have you heard a lot of good things about Bray Wyatt? No, but I do... Somebody told me this uh, in a WWE, one of the wrestlers, that there's something wrong with him physically. So I don't know if he's injured or what. But right. Yeah. Yeah. Next one, Stephen Homburg, and the subject is Coney and Disco. Good day, gents. Hope you're doing well. Back in your WCW run, did you ever put an idea about being a tag team together, apart from the Filthy Animals, and Conan joined the Disco gimmick in attires? Would have been tremendous. So, Conan, do you think you should have dressed up as a Disco guy? And do uh, you think that would have gotten over? I was already over, so why would I want to dress like a disco guy? <laughs> All right. Next one's from our another booking question here from our resident Mark, Brian Dunlop. Did you see Brian Dunlop try to correct my, my your your with the apostrophe on, on uh no. on Twitter and he was he got it wrong? No. Of course he did. Yeah, I mean <laughs> Is uh, that a good use good reason to suspend him? No, we haven't any well then that's just Twitter. Twitter. That's Twitter. All okay. right. Uh, hmm. he's from uh subject thoughts on Cole Cabana's wrestling career. Hello, Conan Disco. Coco Bad has wrestled professionally for over 20 years, and the most memorable part of his career was being name dropped by Punk during the Pipe Bomb promo. Why do you think Cabana was only a star in Ring of Honor in the Indies and never made it in the big leagues? Cabana wrestled the Scotty Goldman briefly on WWE SmackDown and did nothing of note. What was holding Cabana back all these years? Is promo abilities and her wrestling skills? Is it a failure to connect with the wider audience? And I think the only way to make Cabana a true star in AEW is if Tony Khan gets to book Colt in a feud with friend turned enemy CM Punk. So far, what I remember most about Cabana and AEW is that I saw him hanging out with the Dark Order, but a program with Punk could be a game-changer for Cabana. I think the two in a tag team could also be entertaining. They are two-time Ring of Honor cha tag team champions together. Obviously, there's a lot of history between the two, and sadly, their friendship appears to be a thing of the past. I just came up with a fantastic idea just now. Hmm. Uh, and I wonder if this is a case, right, of why maybe some of this stuff is, is going sideways. CM Punk says he's willing to work with, with uh, Kenny Omega and the um, – well, I've actually wanted to know if CM Punk. This is being reported. Yeah. That he's willing to work with Kenny Omega and, and the Young Bucks, right? What if Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks said, okay, really? You, you want to work? Are you willing to work with Cole Cabana? 
And what if he said, I'll never work with Coca Cabana? <laughs> said, well, show you do. Well, because we don't, like, you need to fix your Coca Cabana thing before you work with us. Because how do I know that you're being honest saying you'll work with us and not just go into business for yourself again? What, what do you think about what I just brought up there, Conan? What, what do you think? I don't know. I don't think, um, you know, I think that Punk wouldn't go into business because they'd sniff it out real quick and, and stop well, he's it got right live. There. He's got live mic. Yeah. But yeah, that's, what, he went, that's business, what I'm talking about. He went to business for himself yeah, before. But if, yeah, but right. if he goes into business again, these are going are gonna to tell Tony we're not working with him, and that's the end of that. So I don't think Punk would be that dumb. Um, I don't know. I, it would be... I, I think Caban is entertaining, and I think he's funny. And, he his, wrestling, and his wrestling is good. Yeah. You know, he doesn't come off as a star, but he does come off as somebody that you can do a lot of shit with, you know. He's, he's a comedic-style wrestler that could do all the shit, but... I, he he never really got in the type of shape they wanted him to be in, you know. Like I, I think that's one thing that they held him back over too, yeah. right? Um, I'm very, a very Cabana. talented guy. I I, I, yeah. I like I like Hulk Cabana a lot. Yeah, so. I like when he's Twinkie the Kid. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't. First, I don't think Punk would. I think Disco's idea there. I don't think Punk would work with Cabana. That's just from what I've seen and read and everything. And plus, Colt's never been. Why would you put Punk in a in a feud with Cabana? He's never been treated on their TV as a serious contender or threat to because anyone. you write like up a, a storyline like about their down. past and how they used to be friends and how right. they weren't and because of the lawyer and you build yeah. it up it's very got a million, I, I thought that would have been good a couple of years ago when he it's came still back good but right i think now, now you can like, still do it you're right you wrong joe joe you got to be kidding me that you you the backstory of combat versus punk can't be made into a match you gotta be come on there's like so much realism <laughs> There's Nexus no from David sound in that, so you can fix it to you. So yeah. Nothing. Nex <laughs> Nexus from David Venture, and the subject is snore wrestlers making movies. David Bar guy from Tomb Water, Washington. Greetings, Disco, Mr. Conan, and that other guy. I what like are your thoughts? <laughs> what are your thoughts on all these wrestlers making movies? Kind of worked for Hogan. We all know what it did for The Rock, and Dave Batista isn't doing too shabby either. Who here wants to see Cody Rhodes start a movie? Is he going to make us care about not winning a title in a movie? Would it flub like Triple H as corny as RVD's and Tommy Dreamer's appearance in some indie flick, or as bad as Damianti and Peter Avalon's movies? What are your thoughts on the transition? Would you even care to see Cody as a Marine 17? Thank you for your time. This is a terrible email. Um, he's just trying to bury Cody. Uh, I think Cody's a good actor and, and could act very well. Cody, your dogs are going crazy again here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Co Co I, this, this is a lame email. Just suspend that guy for a week, Joe. What's this guy's name? number seven this yeah. week. Uh, David David Venture. Yeah. yeah. I would say Dreamer. Uh, I, I, don't know, I doubt you guys have seen it because it is a, a, an indie flick. But I saw him in a movie called Almost Mercy where he was very good. And he's got a few movies that come out, came out last year and come out this year. So he's making a go of it, you know. And Van Damme's uh, movie was, it was, was a, you know, kung fu wait, style. Wait, wait, where did you, you see expect. these movies? Because I, I don't think they um, were in theaters. Amazon Prime, you know, not in yeah, yeah, yeah. But Van Damme's was 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 a fun movie too, and that also had Batista in it. 